MJ15, paper 4, variant 2, question 11. Look at this beautiful coaxial. One way of sending your signal, channel of communication, is using a coaxial cable. That's what this thing is. This is a diagram. Suggest the material from which the component labeled A here is made out of. So we know it's going to be a thin wire braid. But what, what material? Uh, may they want a name? Uh? Okay, so we say it's going to be a common one. You can say it's copper. So a copper braid. Some metal. Lah. As long as you give some metal, CIA is fine with you. Wire, things like that. I wonder what it's for. Hmm. Oh, that's part two. Okay, never mind. Suggest two function of the component label A. Why do we have a braid? Why is there a copper mesh wrapping around the wire? Well, the num number one top main reason is so that it's, it provides shielding. So we can say shielding from interference. Shielding who are? Oh, the inner copper wire, this one is the one that transfers the signal. We don't want interference, we don't want crosstalk, so we need to shield it from some kind of EMF interference. So shielding the uh, inner wire from interference. Best to be specific when you are writing this. Or the other word you can use is crosstalk, which happens a lot in wire pairs. Ah, uh, yeah. Another another function of this component. Uh, mm, ah, signal must have two way, right? So maybe the signal inside the copper wire goes this way. Then through the copper braid, it goes the other way. Lo. So it's a return path. You go here, you got to go there. Two ways. Mm, okay. Two ways for our coaxial. I like that. So we can say that this is a return path. Uh, provides a return path. So-called return path la, yeah, for the signal. The one that is truly only one way, just signal can only travel in one way, is the fiber optic. Fiber optic. The light only can go that way. Lo. Okay, moving on. Oh, I forgot to mark. This one, B2. You got any two ideas correct? That's just B2. Uh, there's one more that you can also add on. La, increase security. Not so easy to listen to the info that is being sent compared to wire pair. So increase security line. That's why you have a copper braid there. Moving on. When a signal travels along the coaxial cable, it's attenuated. Pretty normal. All, all the things will get attenuated. What is attenuation though? Here's where you can say that this is the loss of signal power. This one, we are specific to communication, so we stick to the communication. Don't talk about ultrasound or x-rays definition. Although they're all meaning attenuation, this one, you adjust it a bit so it's specific for communication. So loss of signal power. Okay, la, loss of power. Signal power is to make it specific. If you want to mention during transition, also can. Not transition, transmission. You transmit the signal, got some power loss. Mm, okay. This is one mark. Sit and explain why we use decibel to measure frequency. Uh, sorry, measure attenuation. Yeah, know why? Uh? Attenuation, we use dB, dB inside here. Other chapter, we don't have dB. Oh. I mean, God, they just don't use it. Because it's not exactly relevant for those type of things. But in, in communications, yes, dB. So we can talk about our benefits that we mentioned earlier in the theory video explaining the db so we say db is based on the log scale log 10 to be precise so what does that do so larger numbers are easier to handle mm. so if you say oh my signal become 10,000 times stronger uh, that's a lot of zeros to write if you have to write it all the time or 10,000 times weaker. Then if you just convert it to a dB scale, this will be 40 dB, uh, something like that. So this one, you can just write it as 40 dB. Oh, larger, right? So positive 40 dB. It's pretty nice, especially if you are doing calculations like the other examples. I don't want to keep writing zeros. I just want to write 10 dB. Okay, I know what it means. Uh, what other state and explain, right? I think we kind of stated log 10 scale, so larger numbers are easier to handle. Okay, so there's two marks here. First one, if you talk about log scale, you recognize that dB is a log scale. So one possible reason, 
easier to handle. So this can be B1 and B1. There's another possible answer which you can also write. Talking about amplification and gain. Amplification or gain is easier to calculate because you can add together log numbers. Addition, uh, multiplication becomes addition when there are log involved. Go check out the theory video if you haven't and you will see more examples on what these mean. More explanations too. Last part. Is this the last part? Yes. Okay, calculation. Let's go. TV area is connected to a receiver using a coaxial cable of length 11. So if you look behind me, you will see a TV area, a very old TV type. So if you notice, there are different lengths of it. And some are shorter, some are longer for different wavelength, different frequency. Anyway, from the top of the roof to your TV is 11 meter. That one already can have signal loss. Ah, yo, why so much signal loss? Nah, here's the TV area. Connect wire to TV. Already lose some signal. Ah, yeah, not good. So the attenuation per unit length. Oh, remember this? dB per km. Attenuation per unit length is given. So for each kilometer of wire, you will lose out nine, 190 dB. That's quite a lot. Wow, that's a pretty big attenuation. Not very good. But we need to calculate the ratio. That's a magic word. Ratio. Where do we see ratio? It's related to the dB. Ratio of power is dB. So they ask you to find ratio of your output to the input. Kind of like saying, can you please help me find P out? over P in from your coaxial cable. So wh what was signal going? Huh? So from an from your antenna aerial, you have an input signal. It will travel, travel, travel through the wire, reach the TV, that's your output. Already, so how to find the ratio? You stay calm. Find your dB first. Okay, if they ever give you dB per km, you find attenuation ratio first. So to find attenuation, number one, we are going to find the ratio. Uh, we're going to deal with the ratio in dB. So ratio in dB. How do we find attenuation ratio? Is given 190 dB per km. So the unit can kind of help you if you are confused. Lah. I want to get rid of the km. I just want a dB. How long is this wire? 11 meters, right? 11 meters. So for 11 meters, oh, I want to convert to km. Okay, sure. Convert to km. What will be the attenuation? Press calculator, you should get about 2.09 dB. This 2.09 means as you travel, you will lose 2.09 dB. Well, it's just ratioing your output and input. So 11 meters, you lose this much dB. Ooh, okay lah. Mm, got negative sign, but never mind, later we include it. Now we can do the ratio. Okay, remember we want to figure out how to do this power ratio. So we're going to use the ratio equation, your attenuation ratio again. So ratio in dB, let me rewrite for you. This will be 10 log 10 P, what P to use here? P out over P in. You input, travel a certain distance, what you have at the end. So here, our ratio will be negative 2.09. Negative means you decrease the deal, you lose signal from your input all the way to your output. And then everything else you just plug in. So 10, I'm lazy to write log 10. Can I just write LG? Can. Up to you. Output, input. Oh, that's the ratio we're trying to find. Oh, oh sweet. Okay, we'll keep this as a fraction then. So how do we get the out over in and open up the log? First thing you need to do is get rid of the 10. So divide everything by 10. So this will be 0 0.209. Ah yeah, if you know how to undo the lock, you can skip all this working. I'm just showing you in case you're not sure how to do lock. So this is the final step. Okay, and we can say, okay, what's the base? Base 10. So we write 10 to the power of negative 0 0.209 equal to whatever is inside the bracket previously. So that will be P out over P in. Okay, what's the answer? 10 to the power of negative 0.209, I got on my calculator 0 0.618. So my final answer will be 0 0.618 as my ratio. 
This is three marks. Woof. First one is attenuation. You found the attenuation. That's your first. Second one, you use the you plug in the values to the ratio equation. That's another mark. And finally, if you got a final answer, that's the final mark. By the way, this one, no answer line, right? So they're right there, lah. Ratio equals to ah, then that's your final answer down there. So that is all for this question. I will see you in the next one. A lot more to go because we feel like this chapter, I think we include more examples. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.